Well, friends, today is Tuesday, May uh, 3rd, 2022. We are on the second day of a six-week sermon series and devotional series that's in the book of James, just the first two chapters of the book of James. We're not going to necessarily always take the bird's eye view. This is the bug's eye view. It's not the wide angle lens. This is the detail picture. We're going to get into particular verses and words, and that's kind of fun to dig in a deep way into scripture in small, small pieces in James. So we learned uh, yesterday that James, uh, the brother of Jesus, was writing to dispersed Christian communities that were uh, connected with synagogues in different parts of uh, the world, in North Africa and um, in parts of Asia and also in um, Egypt and in Syria and, uh, and in other parts of the world where there were, there were synagogues at the time. Uh, and he was he, he starts out kind of rough with them. He says, you know, greetings. And then he says, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy. Hmm. Um, who rejoices when there's struggle and trial? Uh, who celebrates challenges and suffering and, and difficulty? Uh, is this masochism? Masochism is where you enjoy pain and struggle, and that's unhealthy. That's considered psychologically unhealthy to be a masochist. And so that's not what James is saying when you consider a joy when you're in a test or a trial. And this is the thing we need to explore a little bit today um, because it can't be what James means because James knows well the Bible's teaching about lament and mourning. And lament is a formal way <clears throat> of praying your mourning. And mourning is when you're sad about the things that break God's heart in the world. And so when someone else is struggling and this impacts you emotionally, you're mourning. When uh, you lose somebody and you're personally hurt by that loss, that's mourning. But mourning is the intelligent emotional response, the right one, to the world's brokenness. If we, don't love, if, if we love people, we're going to miss them if they're hurt if they're gone or we're going to feel for them if they're hurt and so the other side of love is mourning that's why jesus said blessed are those who mourn it shows you're awake and alive to the problems in the world that you care about things that you have compassion and so mourning is not a bad thing neither is lament emotional honesty indeed very important in the bible the psalms are full of it so what can james mean when he says uh whenever you face trials of any kind consider it joy well, he means something deeper. And that is that in this broken landscape of our world where life is one trial after another, God wants to use those trials to change us, our hearts and our characters. He wants to grow in us a kind of heroic endurance. And if, if we cooperate with him in that work, then uh, we are going to be changing our identity in an amazing way. We're going to be begin to become, as we learn later, a more complete people. And um, God works, in other words, not just in the, in the great things of, you know, giving us gifts and blessing us and, and showing us his grace and inspiring us and uh, encouraging us, but he also works in the difficult moments. He works in judgment. He, uh, he works in accountability. Uh, he works not only with his right hand, but also, as Luther says, with his left hand in the problematic things. And in fact, he can grow us in those moments in, in remarkable ways. We're going to look at that. Um, he can use trials for a greater purpose. And that is a redeeming and joyous truth, as we'll see this week. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're glad that James is not telling us that we have to be uh, happy, happy, happy in the midst of terrible suffering. Um, it's not a natural response to temptation and trial. False joy would be a would be the wrong thing. Uh, it would contradict the Bible's teaching about mourning and emotional honesty. But instead, James knows there's a deeper solace when we know that God is present and God is effectively shaping us in the midst of trials. And so we, we want to learn to trust God in those moments so that he can change us and make us fit for heaven. We ask this in his name. Amen.